Okay, now that I've uh, talked about the general geometry of the flying wings and the Elevon shapes and spoken to the spanwise flow, we need to take a look at the problem in two dimensions uh, before moving on to three dimensions. Uh, it's, it'll be a little bit easier to understand if we talk to just basic airfoil geometry and how aerodynamics work when you deflect a flap. So here I've drawn uh, the actual airfoil shape uh, for my wing. Uh, out near the tip, and I've indicated uh, a flap here that can move up and down. The elevon can go like this, and I've drawn in the basic uh, parameters of an airfoil in flight. I know this isn't exact. The lift is actually angled back slightly, and that's what generates the induced drag and so forth. But for purposes of our discussion, this is good enough. Um, what we're most interested in is the cord line of the airfoil and the camber that's in the airfoil. Now, the cord line of an airfoil runs from A to B. It's the point furthest forward on the airfoil to the point furthest aft on the airfoil. That is the cord line for that airfoil with an undeflected flap. Now, that uh, essentially changes when we move the flap. This cord line is still what aerodynamicists use to measure relative to, but when you deflect the flap up or down, you get a new, what I call, effective cord line. Uh, it's a non-conventional notation, but for purposes of our discussion here, is perfectly fine. So I'm calling that alpha sub E. And when we deflect the flap down, uh, the effective cord line goes to a higher angle of attack, and when we deflect the flap up, that effective cord line goes to a lower angle of attack. That changes the aerodynamics of the airfoil. And what happens here, shown up in this uh, little diagram here, essentially as we move a flap or change the camber of the airfoil, we're changing the point of the zero lift uh, uh, line, uh, and it moves back in terms of angle of attack. So uh, with a perfectly symmetrical airfoil, the zero lift is right here at zero alpha. No angle of attack, no lift. As we begin to camber the airfoil, in other words, deflect the flap down, we shift the curve this way. And the zero lift line is here at a negative angle of attack. And you can see that simply because uh, we're moving that effective cord line down. So the zero lift line is now higher up. Uh, you'd have to tilt the airfoil down to get down to zero lift. And that would put this cord line, the original cord line, at a negative angle of attack. We've got to get this cord line back to zero, so that pushes that negative, and the curve moves this way on the graph. Uh, you can see this effective cord line, essentially, if we looked at a cambered airfoil. Here's a cambered airfoil, and the cord line is drawn from the nose, the furthest point forward, to the furthest point further aft. The cord line doesn't run through here. That's the camber line. The cord line runs straight. So for cambered airfoils, this cord line is up at a higher angle of attack, provided that the wind stream is this way. So uh, we're essentially cambering the airfoil when we deflect a flap. Uh, flap down, high camber, flap up, lower camber, or negative camber. So this uh, concept of an effective cord line is perfectly valid and very important to understanding uh, what I'm going to tell you uh, in the next round about what's going on with the elevon and what happens with the flying wing. So as we go to a very high cambered airfoil, it pushes this curve even further back this way. So as this effective cord line moves down, you have to tilt this airfoil down, 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 down more more negative angle of attack in order to get the zero lift. Now, an interesting thing happens in the whole process here. As this stall point on the curve moves aft, as this curve moves aft, you're actually able to get um, more lift because you're cambered. However, the stall angle of attack is reduced, and that's because we're shifting the curve this way on the graph. As this camber line tilts down, we can pull a higher CL, higher coefficient of lift, but stall point is a lower angle of attack, and it's very important to remember for later, and vice versa. As we deflect the flap up, 
that effective camber, or excuse me, effective cord line goes to a shallower angle of attack and the curve would move this way. The zero lift line, as we deflect this flap up at the back, in other words, up Elevon, this curve is going to move this way on the graph and the zero lift line is now going to be at a positive angle of attack. And likewise, you'll generate less lift, but that airfoil will go to a higher angle of attack before it stalls. And that makes sense because our effective corner line is now up here, so we can rotate this airfoil even further before it stalls. And that's because we're measuring everything relative to the original cord line. So as elevons are deflected on a flying wing, we are changing the uh, available stall angle of attack. In other words, as the elevon goes up like this, this 2D section of the wing, that one slice right through the wing, can actually go up to a higher angle of attack before it stalls. It won't generate as much lift because it has reverse camber in it, but it will go to a much higher angle of attack before it stalls, and vice versa. When the elevon is down, we can generate a lot of lift, but it's not going to go to as high an angle of attack before it stalls. These are important concepts to remember as I go on to talk to the three-dimensional uh, effect of elevon shape. Uh, please keep in mind these parameters. We'll probably pull this board back.